Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Wa bihi nasta'in ala kulli umuri dunya wa ddin wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin Sayyidina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa nuri khulubina wa qurati a'yunina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa salim wa tata'alluma wa ta'anim wa tazakura wa tazkir wa naf'a wa lintifa' wa lifada wa listifada wa lahatha ala tamasuki bi kitabillahi wa sunati rasulihi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa du'a ila luhuda wa talalah al-khair ibtigha'a wa jihillah wa maradatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin اللهم إن نسرك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسرك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسرك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهاب يا غني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين 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 الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله بريس الله سبحانه وتعالى Alhamdulillah for another Friday night uh, to increase in our salawas unto our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, increase in our ibadah, make our make duas. As every Friday night, it is one of the five nights that is said by our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and narrated, you know, in uh, in narrations by Sayyidina Ali and others um, uh, of the of the five nights that if a person were to bring these nights to life. Uh, in worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings uh, their hearts to life on a day whereby hearts will die. And and the rest of the nights, they happen once a year. <laughs> Only one of them happens every week, which is Friday night. Right? And we tend to, when we come to any of these special nights, we will, you know, uh, our our teachers will always remind us that right, we're on the first night of Rajab, we're on the middle night of Sha'aban, right? we're on the night of the, the Eids, the two Eids, right? that's the four nights. Right? And the fifth one is on a Friday night. Right? And they used to also, also you know, Remind us We're on a Friday night We're on a Friday night Make your du'as right? So not to it, um, uh, Be heedless you know, We're on a very special night Alhamdulillah From the point that you know, it, it has come into Maghrib right, to, uh, to make intention right, to inc- At least make the intention right, To increase in your salawats right, in, uh, in this day which is why Alhamdulillah it is a it is a ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for us numerous majalis online right, uh, that is uh, that speak about the maulid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you can always go and, and all of this to, to begin your Friday you know with uh, such a beautiful way of doing or beginning your Friday right, so mashallah I mean, numerous majlis right, to, to increase in your salawat and to uh, reflect on the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like, a lot of these maulids are actually already trans- Translated into English, right? so it, uh, to seek it, right? to learn it, to learn the words. You know, mashallah, a lot of these uh, words are also directly taken right, from hadith. Right, so, you know, and in fact, in memorizing maulid, right, you actually memorize parts of hadith, right, and in that, there is, uh, you know, you can you can intend right, to gain from, uh, uh, to gain knowledge right, from our, uh, from from the righteous of the past. Alhamdulillah, uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, and which is why, which is why also that in the morning of Fridays, right, to uh, to do the burda, right, to do uh, more slawats in the morning of Fridays, and to remember the right, remind ourselves tomorrow tonight, right, with uh, abundant slawat, and tomorrow morning, right, right after subuh, part of your wirid, right? You should be having slawats, and right? right after you f- you pray subuh, you should be doing your slawats midday. I be doing slawats, uh, and then before asar in, in sa'a fatim, uh, uh, at the last hour of Friday, be doing your slawats, right? And mashallah, you know, uh, and even if it's if someone finds it difficult to do uh, slawats, at least don't don't fall short on listening, right? To people, if you find that you have a lot of things to do. Right, so at least you know, at least put it on, because <laughs> you have no excuse. You know, we're living in a time whereby whereby uh, many things are recorded. Right? We can always uh, you know put it on at a time whereby we are we are available to listen to it. You know, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And then it's uh, the sense lawas into Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi was was one of the greatest. Is in fact the, one of the greatest um, blessing that has come to this ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. Um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our in our gathering you know around the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, allow for this gathering to manifest again in the hereafter where we gather together you know in a majlis or listening to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mashallah uh, this earlier this week I was teaching the children about the hadith 
uh, and these are the young children and so it, we're trying to see how do we, we're going through hadith and trying to see how we can represent the hadith you know best to them right the hadith for them this week was shafa'ati uh, and it, they, they will continue if those of them, of them who are sitting online they'll continue the hadith <laughs> and shafa'ati qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shafa'ati li ahli kabair min ummati right uh, she'll get one of them to, con- to continue I don't know I don't know who's listening online actually <laughs> right uh, they want to listen they want to say I don't know if they're there. Any of the kids online want to want us to complete the hadith? Going, going once, going twice. Eh? <laughs> okay, never mind. Alhamdulillah. I don't know. I'm not sure if they're there. Whether Aisha's there, Aisha, Muaz, not so sure if they're all there. Yeah, are they there? Okay, Bismillah. Min umati <laughs> Min min Aisha Ahsan Ahsan di Aisha Barakallahu fiki Aisha MashaAllah I said uh, That was the hadith And I was I just, just um, Actually I don't know Whether the, the kids Notice or not But but In telling the story On the on the great shafa'a Of Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It's very uh, it, it is very touching You know that When you when you speak about it And I think there were Several times Whereby, whereby I would just You know I'd Take a pause And then <laughs> And then look at them And I don't know Whether they noticed That I was trying to uh, Control like for, but, but mashallah Because children Mashallah right? But just the, the story like And actually If you flip this whiteboard You will see the story On the other side <laughs> Of this whiteboard the, the drawing And drawing of the stories On the other side uh, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad right? But uh, I was telling them That you know There was Because um, you know In, in, in talking about my uh, About one of my uh, Former students Young boy And I mentioned him A few times uh, In my classes Salman right? uh, and, and because I told them that it, I told them that Salman uh, when he when I used to teach him in Tari, when I used to teach the boys, that like was an all boys class. But he would come with his sister, <laughs> and his sister uh, Zainab, right? She would she would come and she fall asleep at the side. <laughs> right, but he's six and she's I think she's four at the time, a three, right? But he would come with his sister and then he would um and they would sit right in front and he would always come, you know, formal and crisp. You know, and ready to listen to the stories uh, on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Um, and of course, and 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 this, and, and I'm, I think I mentioned before that tragically he was hit by a car, right? Uh, in Tarim and he passed away, right? And uh, one of the stories I was telling them, you know, that that when I when I was teaching the story, the the story the story of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, in the hadith of his shafa'a of his great shafa'a of his great intercession, it's a long hadith, right? But the hadith actually begins with Rasul. With Sayyidina Abu Huraira um, Sayyidina Abu Huraira saying that they were sitting once with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was you know uh, served some meat you know and Sayyidina Abu Huraira actually you know put it in you know in his narration and they put in these details you know mashallah they put this in, in his narration that and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know he would uh, he was eating from the shoulder you know of the of of the meat, you know, of shoulder of the of the animal, and he used to go for the shoulder. He, it was his favorite part, and it was known among the Sahaba he liked the shoulder, <laughs> right, or the, in the part. Which is why you know, and I told them that there are parts where some loved, you know, and it was his favorite, you know, and he learned what favorite and what his favorite part in in in, in Arabic. Um, anyway, so so and says I said Abu Huraira he mentions that, and Rasulullah you know was sitting with his Sahaba, and it's one of his sunnas. Then when you sit with your Sahaba, then you then he begins to tell stories. Right, and his stories are the stories of the past. Right, whereby in in the Rasulishin, you find many narrations of him just narrating the Sahaba, the stories of the men of the cave, the story, the three men in the cave, the stories of um, the young boy with the magician in Surah Buruj, the story of all of these stories come from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the tree who uh, who spoke in the tr- in the cradle from Bani Israel. Right, all of these stories are from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he also speaks about stories in the future. Right, he will speak about men, you know, uh, great people, great women, great, great, uh, great, in, great, great characters or great individuals in the future, and sometimes specifically, right? There is a, there will be a specific description. Like for example, Imam Shafi'i, I was said to be foretold by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His coming, you know, he will revive the religion, you know, uh, in in his time. And someone from the from the line of the Quraysh, right, who will bring the religion and and and, and, and form it up, Imam Shafi'i. And if you look into his life, you you see, you know, there is there is a Subhanallah, there's a, there, there, there are the characteristics. Right, so it was one of these uh, situations whereby he was sitting with the, the companions. 
and he began uh, you know uh, telling stories right about uh, about the future but this was the future future right and meaning the, 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 the day of judgment and I was telling them that you know that this is how this this, this how they like to come right to gatherings by stories are told like story after story is, is being told um, that the companions of the used to love it right they used to sit they used to love uh, sitting sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when you see that his face you know uh, begin to change and his face begin to you know um, think and he begins to to to, to speak right? they attentively listen to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in, in in what story he is about to uh, inform the uh, tell the companions Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad right? so it, uh, I was telling them that you know one and, and in the in in their love right to listen to stories about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like in in them like, and, and they, I know I, 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 can, I can tell like, whenever I go into serious things like, they have a different <laughs> thing a different you know look on their face whenever I go into story then straight away you know story about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even more you know the, 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 they will perk up you know and start to listen and I said that you know there was one um, that, that about Salman You know, that uh, that his mother told me, right? You know, I forgot to, when 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 he passed away, and the news came to us. Uh, you know, it's shocking, like because he didn't didn't expect. I saw him the same. I saw him the day that he passed away. Right? And then when he went out, he got hit by a car, and he he died on the spot. Um, may Allah have mercy on his parents, <laughs> and, and and forgive them. And make, and whenever whenever uh, we speak about children who have passed away, the dua goes to the parents, right? It's because the children are, are pure. Right, they're pure. So you always you, you do offer the parents, and we all give them you know steadfastness, and we all give them uh, a strength. Right, um, and so when I, when we went to visit, we went to visit her after that, um, my 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 friend, and uh, and and she would and it wasn't the same. It was when we went on the same day, and then a few days later we went again to help her, you know, to help her uh, cope. There's so one thing. There's one beautiful um, uh, culture. Right in the room, that whenever anyone is in need, right, the community will all work together to support the person who is in need, right. So any need in any way, even if it's emotional need, even if whatever it is. So like for example, if someone just gave birth, right, there will be a cooking roaster, right, and people will cook and send food. Right to the family, right, and the family will um will have like a full, you know, <laughs> mashallah. If you're a traveler, if you just came, you know, from from like from your own country, you just arrived, right. There will also be a cooking roaster for you to just help you get on your feet, right, and then you can get carry on yourself, right. But the whole co- the community will come together, right, and then they will they will have um they they will, they will just you know chip in, and you will find food being sent to you. You wonder where is it coming from? So the first time it happened, to you, I was like, where, who who knows? No, who who's who's doing this? <laughs> Like, where is this? Then you realize it's actually a system, you know, of support, right? And so usually, usually it goes by um by a person giving birth, you know, a person falling sick, a person uh, uh having uh usually traveling, right? So this was actually the first time that we actually had a you know we realized that we had had a cooking roaster for someone grieving. You know, so the, because the mother was, you know, she, the, the 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 parents are, are are deeply were grieving, right? So we had to have like a roaster, right, to try and to 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 just help them get back, you know. And it was like, not just a cooking roaster, but a a child caring roaster also. She had younger children, right? So there were younger ones, right? So Imam Wahab, this is all the, the 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 Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see, in a community that really bring to life the Sunnah, that automatically there will be people who be like, how how are children? Bring them out, right? Take them. You know, uh, bring them elsewhere them, because the mother's grieving, and she's unable to, you know, uh, handle the children, right? So, actually, there is this uh, system, you know, mashallah, Allah masalliya ala sidna Muhammad, right? So, it, uh, the the <laughs> it's amazing, you know, it's amazing. So, there was one of these times that we went by her house to um, to just help her with the, with the housework, even housework hold roster, because when people are grieving, they become paralyzed. Right, so so there are people coming in to help things, more, you know, continue, right? They in daily life, right? Help or would clear his things, you know. And it would be difficult for the parent to to handle that, <laughs> mashallah. So it was one time I went there and she was, uh, and she was, she was telling me that. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, she was just telling me that, uh, you know, someone had a vision of him, uh, like in a dream, lah, you know, a dream. Whereby because because she was, you know, she was she was still. Grieving, uh, you know, it was you can imagine lah. Like, the most difficult thing for for a mother to face is is it is it, it's not the most painful thing for a mother is not you know burying the children. It is burying the children. Right? That one is more is more painful than burying the children. You know, so uh, so she was saying to me that um someone had a dream, 
sama close to her a dream when she saw Salman 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 she saw Salman Salman her son uh, but he would write his name Salman Al-Farisi yeah, to the point that I would when he was alive I was I asked her do you name him Salman Al-Farisi she said no he just writes it <laughs> his name is Salman <laughs> right, but he would write it as Salman Farisi you know and he and when he was in my class like, it was so real to him he actually was smart to me, to me that he actually thought he was six years old he actually thought that if he were to walk right now to Medina he would find all the Sahaba there he would find the, like he would find this situation going on like in, in Medina right now <laughs> you know mashallah I mean he, he really he really thought that, that you could just go there <laughs> and you could just find them there you know, they're all in Medina <laughs> like they're all you know uh, at the situation mashallah it's Marikat Alim this is years ago it's years ago it's not now <laughs> you know mashallah okay, so but uh, someone saw him in a vision and um the vision that uh, they saw him in a like sitting on like around the sufra that kind of thing you know uh, and with him uh, was Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know and some of the uh, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad <laughs> Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad and it was 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 Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and some of and and Sayyidina Khadija Sayyidina Fatima I was said you know some of the companions around with him and he was listening to uh, some speak you know it's how he used to love majlis of, of, of stories in this dunya Allah gave him the majlis of stories in the in the hereafter um, and and he looked at the person who saw him in the dream and he said tell my mother that I'm okay inshallah Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa he sent a message you know tell my mother that I'm okay right, where I'm at Alhamdulillah I'm in a better place mashallah right, so um, and this was how the sahaba were Right, they they yearned for this majlis in this kind of like sitting together and hearing stories. And so it's a sunnah, you know, to sit down and then you know have some food and then and then and then mention true stories, you know, about you know about the past, about the future, reminding people. Then one of the stories that um was uh, was on the the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, whereby it was over food. He said that I am the leader of people on the day of judgment. Right, and then how is that so? Because on that day, people will be they will be they will be raised, and they will be uh, in uh, they they will be in horror right, and terror, right? And they will come together, and they will say, "Who do we seek help from? Who do we seek help from?" Right, it's a long hadith. And when they will first go to Nabi Adam, right, and then Nabi Adam will will say, "Not me, not me. You know, don't don't come to me. Right, for I fear." That, or Nabi Adam will say, "My Lord, today." Is angry in a way that he has never been angry before, right? And for me, for myself, myself, you know, because I have I, I went to the tree when I was forbidden from going to the tree, so I don't know about that state, about the situation of that of that of that mistake, right? So then, then he says, you know, go away from me, right? and then they will, so they will go from prophet to prophet. Nabi Ad, so in, in a in a long hadith, right? They will go from Nabi Adam to Nabi Noah to Nabi uh, Ibrahim, Nabi Musa, Nabi Isa, and eventually they go to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Everybody, all of the prophets will say nafsi nafsi, and when they reach Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he will say ummati ummati, right? And then he says in the hadith, and, and it's how him. Can you imagine him, uh, you know, uh, telling the story to the Sahaba and they're hearing this, right? And he said, and I will say ummati ummati, and he said, and I will go into prostration, and I will say in my prostration whatever. Allah will 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 uh will inspire in me, you know, will will teach me at that point, right? Words from himself that that, that, that at that point he will tell me right, what to say. And he will intercede for his ummah, right? There were uh, all of them, all of them who has uh, borne witness that uh, who bear witness that, that there is that there is no god but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi was a messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, so when we come to this majlis, you know, in our intention, renewing our intentions, you know, you want to be in a majlis with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi was we, we want to get his shafaa, his intercession, sallallahu alaihi was a more closest to him, sallallahu alaihi was a something more beautiful than to keep talking about him sallallahu alaihi wasallam alhamdulillah uh, today we are actually in um, the we are actually going into the stories of uh, the the delegations from Yemen right i i know i just keep jumping back from sana i'm not so sure which one i miss which one i have done <laughs> should, I put, should put a mark you know where what i have done and what i have not done yet right, but uh, i think that i'm right now at sending muad and zaina abu musa al-ashari to yemen i've not done that kan and <laughs> the sending of zaina muad the sending of abu musa zaina abu musa al-ashari to yemen tamam bismillahirrahmanirrahim
Right. So, and this is a very beautiful part, you know, where Rasulullah, and we see in last week's lesson that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would uh, place special interests right, in certain groups. And this is only by revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these people, that they have a special characteristic. Right? So, focus on them and, and they will be in the assistance of this religion till the end of times. Right? And mashallah, until the end of time, they will be the people right, who, will, who will uphold the laws of this religion. So, look at, so when, when the whole world is in confusion, right, we, we look to our Prophet alayhi wa sallam, who he has pointed us to. Right? And we look to these people and we follow them in their way. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're on page 407. Right? If Amira is, okay, she's there. Alright, alhamdulillah. Jazahallah. Khair al ya Amira. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'ad bin Jabal and Abu Musa al Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. Radiallahu anhuma to Yemen, asking them to teach people Quran and the affairs of their religion. And this is one of the narrations that, by uh, it, you know, it, it will go into the very um, famous narration on Rasulullah SAW bidding farewell to Zainab Muaz right? and like a, like a fall, like a complete farewell, right? Because inshallah we go into the hadiths right here, right? Uh, whereby when when he sends Zainab Muaz off. He tells uh, Mu'az that perhaps, perhaps meaning you will. Right? Whenever he says, you know, perhaps, right, perhaps in hope of, meaning that it will happen. Right? So perhaps you will come back to Medina right? and you will walk past this grave of mine or this mosque of mine and you go past this grave of mine. Right? To inform Sayyidina Mu'az like this to, just to, you know, give him like a, I mean, it would be bad, bad etiquette to say hits up, right, but, <laughs> but like to, to preempt him. To preempt him that that this is our farewell, right? so don't you're not going to see me again after this, right? It's our farewell, it's our farewell, and I will see you in a hereafter, <laughs> right? Inshallah, right? So so, so he, he informs the Muaz, and that points the Muaz, you know, uh, he already you know had his farewell with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we haven't gone to the, the year of uh, his passing, <laughs> really coming to so the Muaz had it, uh, you know, uh, brought forward for him and told him that, that he you're not going to see me right after this uh, this this. this this uh, 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 of uh, after this, you know, um, split uh, after this separation of ours, and you know, after this separation of ours, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so it. Uh, so, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent his companions Sayyidina Mu'az bin Jabal, Sayyidina Abu Musa al-Ash'ari And they were of the great and the most beloved companions to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyidina Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he was of the Yemenis himself right? So Ash'ari tribe, they are a Yemeni tribe right? So he knows his people and he was sent there Sayyidina Mu'az, uh, he was known for his, uh, for, for his uh, charisma Right, for his charisma, he, like Sahau Sayyidina Mus'ak was also known for it, and right, for their charisma, for how they would uh, reach the people. Right, he was known to uh, that for that, that anyone who looked at him right, would uh, straight away fall in love with him. Sayyidina Mus'ak, Sayyidina Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, right, because he got that uh, love from Rasul, uh, the, the declaration of love right, from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right. So they were they were sent to Yemen to teach the people Quran and the affairs of their religion. Yeah, he appointed each of them over one of its two areas, and you see how you know how much peace can really bring, right? how much goodness peace brings. He was able to do a lot of that one education right, at this point. And with with, with with all this um uh, you know war going on, right, it was paralyzing. Right? In a sense, it, like he has had to handle this. And that's what war really does, right? It just disrupts the entire, the entire fabric of society. It just destroys everything, businesses, finances, everything. And then we are seeing it right now, right? This is what war does. And, it's, and that's why some crooks, when they, when they begin war, that is their goal, right? To just, to just stop right, the, uh, the spread of, of the religion or to stop the spread of goodness, to just make people completely distracted. Right, no, mashaAllah, and one of our our teachers that like, we will call these things, they will call they, he will call it lizard tails, right? Whereby they will put, they will just have like a commotion going on, like a lizard tail. So everyone's just looking at it, and the lizard is doing something else, right, somewhere else. And so there are many lizard tails all over the world, right? And it's all like commotions, right, all over the world while the lizard is doing his work, right, somewhere else. It's very scary. We just finished the gel last week, right? so it's if you think about it, right, these are all lizard tails. If you understand the concept of a lizard tail, right, they're all distractions. So the cat goes there <laughs> the animal goes there the predator goes there but a lizard is up to something else you know mashallah may Allah protect us from this um, from what the lizard is doing uh, Allahumma sadiya ala sayyidina Muhammad 
so so when Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Muaz Yeah, I was saying that. So. Oh yeah, the, about the peace, about peace, right? So this is why you see that that once uh, Makkah was conquered, right? And then you know during the, that Hudaybiyah was really a fatah, I mean Allah uh, revealed that it, that the Muslims have had you know a confirmed victory in this, right? Because it brought in peace, and when peace is brought in, then comes education, right? So he begins to, to send the Sahaba out, right? And they can travel to the land safely. Right, to these to these people and to teach them Quran, to teach them uh, the affairs of their religion. He appointed each of them over one of its two areas. Muaz's area was in the northern one towards Aden, and he was responsible for the army and had uh, and, and it had a famous masjid in it. Our Musa uh, al area was in the southern area. He said to them, make things easy and do not make them difficult. Give glad tidings and do not repel people. Help one another. Now, yes, siru wala tu asiru, bashiru wala tu nafiru. That's the hadith, right? So, and this is uh, this is, this is the core hadith when it comes to da'wah. And when it comes to da'wah, it's a core hadith, right? Yes, siru wala tu asiru, right? Make things easy, don't make things difficult on people. So, be clear on what is wajib on people, and 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 teach them that what is wajib on people, right? and look at what people and where they are at. Right, and then you know, and then if they if they have more himma, they have more drive, then give them a bit more. Right, if they want to do more, uh, wa 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 la tu nafiru. Right, bashiru, you know, attract them right, with good news, right, and do not uh uh chase them away right by being harsh and by being hard hearted right towards them. As Allah subhanahu wa taala, as we went we went through uh we went through um the story of the battle of Uhud, and Allah points out. Right, this great character of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam of never having a hard heart, you know, never have, never being harsh on the people, otherwise they will run away from uh, from him. Abu Musa said, "Ya Rasulullah, our land has a drink they make of barley and a drink they make of honey." And Rasulullah sallam said, "Any intoxicant is forbidden." And this will be a, a question that will be asked by many of the of the people who are new to Islam. They keep asking about their intoxicants, <laughs> right? And he and he and this is where the um, the dalil is, right? That it is uh, any intoxicant is forbidden. Right. So so to go there and to make it clear, and so then Abu Musa and Abu Mu'adh, right? They were they were uh, well. It's from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallam Rasul, Rasul, to first and foremost to choose those who were most eloquent and most knowledgeable of the Quran and, and of the laws of the religion and then uh, those who were uh, physically attractive uh, it was actually one of the one of the sunnas right because human beings are like that and they just they can't that's the nature like human beings right if some, I mean, someone has, if someone is physically attractive people begin to you know gravitate right, towards them just the, the way human beings are right so which is why every prophet in, in the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every prophet is created the most attractive of human beings in their time right the most eloquent the most beloved right the most uh, charismatic of human beings of the time Right. Abu Musa radiallahu anhu went forth to his post in Yemen and Mu'az radiallahu anhu followed him and this was at the end of the ninth year of Hijrah and the one would at the one would walk in his land and find his companion there just before him and he would greet him and they would sit and recite to each other at night they would, the two of them they would go Sayyidina Mu'az radiallahu anhu had the handsomest face and there was he was known for that he was known for his uh, for, for his beauty Right, the best character and was most generous. So his debts increased. Right, you think why? Why? Because they would they would borrow to give. That's how they would do it. The Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam also. But he used to do that. He used to borrow wealth right from the rich and give the wealth to the poor because they were poor themselves. So when the poor ask for 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 sedekah for money, they have no money. They borrow from the rich. Right, and then they 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 give to the poor, and then they will pay back the rich. Right, they will slowly pay back the debts. You know, mashallah, it's a it's a different level of sadaqa altogether. They don't have the money. <laughs> you just borrowing, and you pay him back. I right? guess you know, they they work. Right? they work to pay. They work to pay for uh for what they borrow for other people. You know, mashallah. Right, so so Sayyidina Mu'az was one of one of those people, and there were all the sahabas who would do that also. You know, but many of the sahabas were um 
Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad And many of the sahabas They were uh, businessmen They were rich businessmen Right, so so he he actually uh, he actually increased in his debt. So when Rasulullah sent him to Yemen, right, he said to him, perhaps Allah will amend your state and pay off your debts. Right, perhaps we need that. Inshallah, Allah will do so. So then he counseled him and advised him, saying that you are going to people of the book, and they will ask you what is the key to paradise. Tell them to bear witness there is no god but Allah alone. No partner has He. Right, so it is again prophecy. Right, from Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, giving Sayyidina Mu'az again, you know, uh, uh, to prepare him, you know, with what they will question you about. Al-Bukhari, because in Yemen at that time, it was, uh, the, the, uh, the Christians were there, right, there were Christians there, right, because uh, if you remember Abraha, right, so Abraha was a Christian, Christian king uh, from the Yemen, right, so, and there were churches there, right, so they will ask you of this question, the key to paradise is actually uh, to bear witness, there is no God but Allah, and there is no partner, uh, to him Al-Bukhari narrates on the authority of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Mu'az bin Jabal when he sent him to Yemen you will be meeting members of people of the book so if you come to them call them to witness that there is no God but Allah and that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the messenger of Allah and if they obey you in that then tell them that Allah has prescribed upon them the five prayers in the day and the night and if they obey you in that then tell them that Allah has prescribed upon them the charity the, the zakat right? that is taken from the rich and given to the poor uh, and if you and mashallah the zakat you see it forces the rich people to give out their wealth right? and stop hoarding their wealth no, mashallah um, and if they obey you in that then beware of the fineness of their money right uh, uh, it Allahumma salli Sayyidina Muhammad Naam. And if they obey you in that Then beware of the fineness of their money And beware of the dua Of one transgressed against For verily there is no barrier between it And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? So in giving Sayyidina Mu'az Advice before he goes off right? there, is, uh, there, is, there is a longer hadith And that it speaks about Sayyidina Mu'az uh, Sayyidina Mu'az's uh, Conversation with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam being sent off, it's one of those hadiths by you know to study if you want you really want to know about da'wah I right? don't know how you speak to people. That's how Rasulullah gives Sayyidina Mu'az like 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 someone like a you know a very summarized and this of his of his mu'ajizah you know, of his miracles that he is that he gives you know he has jawam and kalim right? he has uh, summarized he has very concise like but fully packed speech sallallahu alaihi wasallam so. Like in one statement, even that course on da'wah, right? the whole, whatever you have to know about da'wah is here. Right? In what he said, Sayyidina Mu'az bin Jabal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding on what, in, on, on, on the da'wah that is on our shoulders. You know, it's something that is, nobody is free of, right? Everyone carries da'wah, right? Necessarily, necessarily, to your family, to your, to your children, to your parents, your cousins, your, <laughs> necessarily so, right? So it is, it is something that is wajib. Right, on every person, right? To belir ani wala ayah, right? You know, uh, 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 convey on my behalf, even if it's one ayat, and it's the one thing that will bring um, the most joy to the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And there are narrations, you know, whereby uh, when when a person just cares about themselves and about their own uh, development, their own piety, right? That 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 is that does not bring the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala. It doesn't. And what brings his pleasure is are people who actually go and speak to the people who are committing sin. And in 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 uh, Allah Masih Muhammad in the Quran, Allah does speak about the people of this of of this uh, those who broke the Sabbath. Right? They went against the Sabbath. Right? That uh, the people of the people of the the fishermen. Right? They were people of the, by by the sea. Right? And there were three groups that were spoken about. Right? Those who went against it. Right, those who saw them go against it and were okay with it and they interacted with them and then those who actually spoke up against it. Right, three groups. And the only group that was uh, safe was the third group. The first two were, were destroyed. In the so this is what I think about. Right, that they had a responsibility to say something to their people. You know, mashallah. And that's why in, in the Quran itself, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, when, when and Allah quotes the, the, the discussion, the last two groups. So they were the sinners then there were those who, uh, not only did they remain silent, they kind of approved it, right? And they kind of, you know, uh, they, were, they, they made it seem like it was, uh, it was perfectly fine. You know, didn't say anything against it. And uh, there, was a third, there was a third group right, that spoke up against it. Right? In the Quran, Allah, Allah quotes the conversation between the two, the two groups. Right? Whereby one of them says, why do you bother 
talking to people who like whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like, who are disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they give their reasons like, perhaps they might have taqwa and perhaps it will be a, 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 an argument for us on the day of judgment they can come up to us and say that oh we didn't say anything about it no we said something about it you know, but they didn't want to listen You know, mashallah. So there was the the, the situation. All, all about da'wah. It's all about da'wah. You know, mashallah. So so when when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sends a muaz off, you know, uh, to give da'wah, meaning that he's going to go there and he's going to stay there, right? <laughs> to stay where you are, right? Uh, mashallah. Them to 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 get a kind of instruction. Eh? Like, okay, you're going to leave Medina. <laughs> Yeah, it comes. It, it does come. It does come. You know, you want to stay in the one place for a long time. You don't want to go anywhere. Then comes uh, the instruction: go home, <laughs> go home, or go off. You are not to stay here. Go, right? Go. The sunnah of uh, the, the sunnah is that you don't stay in the cave. You get out of the cave, right? And you walk and you walk amongst the people and you and you talk to them and you bear with their harm. Right? And that's the sunnah of da'wah that they will harm you. There are those who will come and harm you. The sunnah of da'wah. And there will those there will be those who will slander you. There will be those who will criticize you. There will be those who will have the worst opinion of you. The 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 worst suzon of you. They will think that you are arrogant. They will think that you are self righteous. They will think all kinds of things about you. That's why it is. <laughs> and that's that one. What are you gonna do? They're your family. And then it's the most difficult is the family, <laughs> because the family they saw you when you were in when you were so small, <laughs> you know, mashallah. They saw you before you learned all this stuff, right? So this, so the family is the one, the one most difficult, right? the most difficult. And the same, the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam's that was also the same thing. He was his family, right? It was initially it was his family that were the ones who were you know, the, and in fact his entire tribe, the whole thing. This is all all they saw was you know yatim bani Hashim. They saw that they were blinded. Right, by by really what he was, Allah Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. Um, sunnah Sunnah of Dawah. Right? So so he says here, um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Let me just it flipped. Uh, that Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, Sayyidina Muadh bin Jabal radiallahu anhu says that when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent him to Yemen, he said to him, what will you do if a case is brought before you? And it's, it's a testing. It's not sunnah of Rasulullah SAW. So, so like, if anyone, you know, were to say, oh, you know, you know we shouldn't have exams. <laughs> if someone says that, eh? okay, like, I'm not saying anything, but, but basically, the thing about exams is that, you know, you, you, you are tested for what you know. Right? And, and when it comes to the religion, you need to have things at your fingertips. Right, because you know, if especially in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, he can't like you know what's that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and say, "Ya Rasulullah, what's the answer? <laughs> like, what do I, what do I say? I don't know. I right, know you're going off. You better be prepared. You know, with your with your luggage. <laughs> like, what do you know? You know, Mashallah. So, so there was some, there was, a, there was a, like a slight testing. You know, when when a case is brought before you, what will you do? And this is basically the the the, the main question. What will you do? He said, "I will judge according to Allah's book." And then comes the next question: What if it's not in Allah's book? This is all laying down principles, right, for the for for the Sahaba to pass on to the next the next uh, uh, group of people. So what if it's not in in the Quran? And he said, then by the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, mashallah, and well trained, say in Muaz. And then he said, what if it's not in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Then he said, and I will go by my educated opinion and not hesitate. Right, so then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam giving him uh, in in his subut, right, to give him firmness. Right, he struck his chest. So he 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 kind of like, you know, like like, like correct. <laughs> like, you know, like stamp of approval, correct. And right? he struck my chest, saying, Alhamdulillah, right, who has helped the messenger of the messenger of Allah to that which pleases the messenger of Allah. Right, so this is why you are being sent, O Muaz. Right, because you are someone of uh of of you know you're able to 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 analyze situation. Right, and you're able to discern. Right, so that's why we say from 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 this, right, we have uh, Quran, then Sunnah, then we have Qiyas, then you have Ijma. Right, so you have so so in a sense, why is Qiyas? Right, it is basically you see a situation, you don't find it in the Quran, you know, uh, clearly outright. You don't find it in the Sunnah clearly outright. So you have a situation in the Quran or Sunnah, right, and you kind of uh, see like a parallel. Uh, you you compare them. Right, and then you base your your the the, the ruling, but it's of course for for those who are learned, because they have to know what's in the Quran and the Sunnah, and they can just make things up, right? So then then they they weigh it, right? and then the, the the ruling will be the same ruling, right? As you know, as as what 
at a similar situation right in the uh, Quran and the Sunnah right so mashallah so it's, it's really um, so up till the, the end of time right this this method you know of of, of being able to compare and right? being able to analyze that they they are similar in um, you know in in the nature of it. Uh, but maybe with technology, it has become something else. But then the, the, the core of it right, is the same. So therefore, the ruling, same. Right? Same ruling. And which is why the, the ruling on, uh, like for example, smoking. Right? So initially, when it was not proven of it being uh, harmful, right, it, was, it, was, it was placed next to something that had a bad smell. You know, and something that was just, you know, uh, caused discomfort amongst the people so it was even the ruling of something with a bad smell that caused discomfort uh, but the moment it was found out that it's something that harms a person then it has a ruling of what harms people right? the person himself and those around him right? So, uh, and whether or not it harms you Right, whether or not it harms you, because sometimes we never, you know, uh, people would say, would say that he has now, you know, in, in consensus around the world. Right, the ulama has really come to the consensus that, that smoking is not permissible. It's haram. Right, it's haram. You know, it's, it's really how many decades ago it's been said. <laughs> I mean, decades ago, when they found that it was that it was uh, harmful, and here that is how they they, they they judge because like if someone were to say going to be of here, if someone were to say that um. That that oh it does not harm me because my 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 lungs are perfectly fine, right? He has the same ruling as someone saying, "Well, alcohol doesn't make me drunk," <laughs> right? <laughs> it's the same the same statement. Is it still haram? Yes, <laughs> right. It's still haram, right? Uh, regardless whether it makes you drunk, right? Even a small amount, it, it's haram. Is haram, <laughs> right? So you don't say, "Oh, it does not harm me." So whatever harms other people, right? Passive smoking. So what if I do it in my in my own room? So all the arguments I ever had before, I do it in my own room alone. I don't do it from anybody else. So I just, you know, smoke myself to death. <laughs> like in, in a sense, you know, but, but, but same thing. Like someone saying, what if I drink in my own room and I don't harm anybody? Like I lock myself in my room and I get drunk in my room and I don't harm anybody. Can I not? No, of course not. <laughs> it's haram. <laughs> right, so this is why how they, 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 they weigh it. Right, so you saying this, is that you saying that? What's the difference? Right, so but 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 alcohol is clearly stated to be uh, haram. But in the Quran itself, it is clearly stated: do not throw yourself into destruction. Uh, so, choose anything that is proven to be harmful, it is forbidden. Right, it, uh, whereby the harm is uh, overweighs uh, outweighs the the benefit of it. Right, so what what and what benefit is there? Right, even uh, in in smoking, in alcohol, at least you know uh, in the Quran, Allah does say there is some benefit, but the harm is greater. Right, so even this for alcohol, and you know, that's why when you say there's benefit, yeah, la, it's a small amount. You find the same benefit in a lot of other foods. <laughs> same benefits from there, you know, inshallah. But for smoking, what benefit is there? What's the benefit? So even compared to alcohol, it's like in the worst situation. <laughs> like, mashallah, I'm going a bit into a uh, fiki. But best, that is basically how Sayyidina Mu'az answered. And it pleased Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right, in his uh, answer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here is basically a testing from the Prophet. He didn't just come forward Sayyidina Mu'az saying, Oh Mu'az, if whatever they ask you about, go by the book first. Then, if you can't find it in the book, then go by the sunnah. If you can't find it in the sunnah, then use your intellect and weigh the situation and do not hesitate. You know, be, be firm about it with the people because you are their teacher. Right? So, um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right? So, so wait, he didn't do that. Right? But he asked Sayyidina Mu'az, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? Then what? Right? Then what? Then what? And that's actually the, one, of the, one of the ways of teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he would say that, you know, and his, they would ask questions. And they say, what if this doesn't work? Now what are you going to do? And what if this doesn't work? What are you going to do? What if someone else says this? And what are you going to do? <laughs> MashaAllah. Like really like, like training, eh? Training. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. <laughs> um, and he also reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when he sent uh, him to Yemen, beware of indulging in luxury for the servants of Allah. Do not indulge in the soft life. Right? In the, in, uh, uh, yeah, it's a hadith. Like it's, it's, you can find the entire long hadith, right? In Sayyidina Mu'az, uh, some of the some of the his, some of the biographies of Sayyidina Mu'az, right, has all of these statements because he is one who narrates. Right? He is one of the narrators of hadith, right? And he narrates um, on and he narrates about what he was told right, by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so it, um, when it comes to luxury, right, and the soft, right, basically in 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 uh, weakening the body. 
right? The soft, you know, soft, soft bedding, right? Soft life, easy life, so all. <laughs> right? Just beware. He said, beware of it, right? Don't because this the kind of life it pampers the nafs. And then it makes the nerves, you know, go into an indulgence, and the nerves begins to uh, be unable to. When once the nerves is is spoiled, it's how we we understand also your children. Right? If they're spoiled on something, it's very difficult to get them out of it, right? And to convince them you don't actually uh, deserve this in the first place, <laughs> right? Because the nerves means has been used to it. Right, so to, to to change them, you know, overnight, they can happen. So don't 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 you know don't 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 go for it. I right? beware of it. I right? don't indulge in it. If it's there, it's there, but don't seek it, right? And don't ha- need to have it. Right? So mashallah, it's a, it's, like, it's something that uh, one of my teachers was saying that it is it is alhamdulillah to live in we were, we were in in Tarim to live in a in a place whereby we don't get electricity, you know, for like long parts of the day. Right? And in the in the heat of the summer, you just sit there in the heat, basically, right? To be used to no aircon, to be used to no, just just be okay, right? Be not be like like other human beings in the past, <laughs> right? The, the, the air conditioning is new, right? And it and it's not necessary right, for the human being. So don't. So it's something also to, to to teach ourselves not to not to always you that you must have air conditioning to fall asleep, or you must have. Uh, this kind of luxury to fall asleep, you know, mashallah. It's just, and we used to like in Syria because when you live in the world countries, you live in all kinds of um situations, <laughs> right? So like in Yemen, it was in the the scorching heat of the valley, right? and the thing about 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 Yemen is that because you ha- it's it's below sea level, right? The heat is like a furnace, right? it's trapped, right? So when you're there in the summer, you walk out and you walk back, like you you just lie down, <laughs> so hot. Like you feel exhausted by the sun. The sun drains your energy. Right? And why shall I? There's, there's, there's this thing about, about about being there. So it's that like, the like, it is scorching, scorching hot. The the the, the heat is like like like, like you say that like it it just <laughs> like on on your brain or something. Allahu Akbar. What it is? Like what, when Ramadan happens in that time, also you're like Subhanallah, Subhanallah. <laughs> right? So you so you you understand that. And the Rasam said that the, the heat of the day right, is part of the hell. Is 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 a is a is a breath from the hellfire. That's the heat. That's the scorching heat of the day. You know. Um. And then in Syria, right, they have winter, and then they have cold, and they have hail, and they have like all kinds of things. And they say when you live in 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 third countries, they don't actually have right, these luxuries. So what do we do in when we are in Syria? You want to fall asleep? <laughs> you want to fall asleep? You basically fall asleep in your body heat. Right, so you wrap yourself in your in your blanket and you heat your blanket up with your body. <laughs> it's your own body heat. Right? So there's no heater somewhere to warm you up. We have heaters, but we won't put on the heater then die at night because of because energy consumption. Then it goes back to money. It goes back to electrical bill. It goes back to a lot of things. You're a student, right? Being a student, you're a traveler, right? You don't, you know, you're not supposed to be in luxury, <laughs> right? Uh, trying to trying to study in luxury. No, you you sit down. And you have you yeah, have minimal things, right? Uh, and and it teaches you that's that's for life, right? That is for life. You are like that, you know. Subhanallah. Uh, but it's training, lah. Shall training, right? So so and but but you you also uh, you appreciate, uh, you appreciate like you know years. And there are people who study for for, for you see our our imams, right? Ten twenty years on the road studying. That's like that, you know how do you even understand it? And they are intense. They're not even in in a room. <laughs> They're intense and just go all the way to one place to get one hadith and right? to learn something. To go there. Some people who have you know it's a uh, uh, sincerity for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right. So so when we speak about all of these things, and not I'm not it's not that you know uh, being in Singapore we're tropical, so it's easy for us to say. Right. Going to to other countries, you will see right the the how the poor live. Right. They don't have these things. Right, and so they, so if it's in the heat of the sun, then they sweat it out. Basically, <laughs> what else do you want to do? <laughs> right, if it's in the cold of the of the winter, and it's why you know when you give a, a sedaka, you give to them because you know you you do freeze right in the cold of the winter. You, you become you know unca- uh, not able to do anything. Right, it's the cold of the winter. Basically, you wrap yourself up and you you just hit the board. The, the, you you hit the, the 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 blanket, then to wake up before subo in that kind of condition. Like the last thing you want to leave is your blanket, <laughs> right? And then to wake up was I still remember our house was like, like open air because Arab housing, right? So you come out of your room, you're right, you're right in the crisp of the night air. <laughs> you're right into it, 
<laughs> and you see, look up, you see the stars, right? So, and, you, and then the bathroom is on the other side. Right? So, you got to just walk around, like, right, in the cold, and then go and take your wudu in the cold water. Right? <laughs> like, right? So, it's, 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 and it's mujahada, mujahada. You're thinking, or like sometimes you come, you come to your room and like, ah, I haven't take wudu before sleeping. <laughs> and you think to yourself, Sunnah. <laughs> it's thinking, thinking, and you just think, toilets all over there, on the other side. <laughs> and you just think to yourself, Allah, get up, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> it's really the like fighting. I still remember fighting in your head, thinking, I cannot sleep without wudu, can sleep without wudu, can sleep without wudu, can sleep without wudu. Can't sleep without wudu. <laughs> <laughs> it's really Subhanallah So when he speaks about He speaks about You know Beware of luxury Beware of luxury Beware of luxury Right Don't get your Nafs used to it Right uh, And don't be one Whereby If the luxury Is not available You can't function Right There's, 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 there's a, a Disease In itself You know Subhanallah See the, the, the advice Of Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam No mashallah Because Sayyidina Mu'az It is something That is from the prophecy Of Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Right That Sayyidina Mu'az Will be very much Beloved People will, you know, um, they will want to give uh, him, radiallahu anhu. You know, he will be beloved to the people. So the the, the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, came right, for him to remember. And a lot of the Sahaba, you know, Rasulullah will give them this advice, right? And they will remember to the end of their lives. And Sayna Sayna uh, Sayna uh, Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, right? That he, uh, you know, he was a governor, you know, over over the people of Damascus. Right, if I'm not wrong, right, the government of the people of Dimashq, right, and it was open, and like, the, the the wealth there, like, it was and not it was not comparable to any kind of wealth. It was wealth there. So Sayyidina Omar right, would, would always, you know, uh, watch his governors and see what they would, what they are doing with the wealth and and how the people are with them. And so when he went to see Sayyidina Abu Baidah bin uh, Jarrah. And uh, to, to to see how he is, you know, and how he's handling the people, right? he uh, he asked to go to his house. Then Omar um, was his there was his habit to see the house, right? And uh, and he said no 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 don't come to my house don't come to my house. And but eventually he, he he insisted, right? And when he went entered the house, he saw that it was completely bare, right? And Subhanallah, he took nothing from the people. In fact, they they have so much taqwa. And then Zainal said, Omar oh, began to weep. And he said that the whole world has changed. But Abu Ubaidah, he has not changed. And he will not change. And he is the Amin of this Ummah. Right? He is the one that, who is entrusted right, in the Ummah. As Esar al said, the one who is, entra- who, who is trusted in this Ummah. So you learn that the, the tarjima of the Sahaba, you know, the, the, the life story of the Sahaba, is really, is, it, they are all the graduates you know, of the training, the school of Rasulullah was some men of caliber that the world has never seen. Right, af- before them nor after them right? no one has ever seen besides the prophets of course right? they've never seen the kind of people the sahaba were and they are of this, one of the greatest proofs of the miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma sadi ala sayyidina Muhammad so beware say la bak ya Rasulullah Sayyidina Mu'az narrates all this for a reason eh? <laughs> it's not just for him <laughs> he narrates this right? beware of indulging in luxury for the servants of Allah do not indulge in the soft Life. He also said the final words of advice from Rasulullah some given to me as I placed my foot in the stirrup were let your behavior and manners towards the people be the best, O Mu'adh bin Jabal. Right, focus on your behavior, and he was known for the most for the most beautiful behavior and the most beautiful manners right, towards the people. And he also narrated that when Rasulullah SAW sent him to Yemen, he SAW set out with him as a sunnah of Rasulullah SAW to walk right, with the person to the end of the town, right, and then to just bid them farewell. Um, so he walked to Sayyidina Mu'az and Sayyidina Mu'az rode, and Rasulullah walked next to his camel. When he had finished, he said, "O oh, Mu'az," and this is when he informs Sayyidina Mu'az. Right? Eventually, informs Sayyidina Mu'az. Right? It could be that you will not see me again after this year. Perhaps you will pass by this masjid of mine, or this grave of mine. In the in the in the, in the hadith, right? this masjid of mine, this grave of mine. Right? Informing Sayyidina Mu'az that this is going to be our last meeting right? in this world, and. and Subhanallah <laughs> And Sayyidina Mu'az He began to weep uh, Grieving f- The separation From Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Can you imagine Being told eh? 
that you're not going to see me after this. This is our, this is my farewell to you. And he sallallahu alaihi was some then turned towards Medina and said, "The people most deserving of me are the people of taqwa. Most deserving means uh, on the day of judgment, closest to me, people of taqwa. Again, in the I mean, sami'na wa ta'na ya Rasulullah, <laughs> and we hear this and we and, and we, we 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 intend to obey ya Rasulullah. Whoever they are, wherever they are." Right, in whichever zaman, whichever makan, whichever place, wherever you are, that it is taqwa, it is taqwa if you want closest to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you know, Mu'az went forth to Yemen until he reached a place where, a, a place between a sakun and, and, and a sakasik, right, where he settled and fulfilled the commands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, and he remained in charge of Yemen until the caliphate of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And in the same year that Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab went on hajj and was placed in charge of hajj by Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, again from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Sayyidina Abu Bakr was placed uh, in charge of Hajj during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr placed Sayyidina Umar right, uh, in charge of Hajj right, later on. So they met on a day of Tarwiyah and Mina and they embraced and consoled each other with the loss of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's the first time that he actually uh, met with the companions again after the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right, and sat on the ground talking. Sayyidina Umar saw the young lads, Sayyidina Mu'ad, and he said, What is this, O oh, oh Abu Abdul Rahman? He said, I gained them as a result of my position. And Umar said, What position? He said, They were given to me as a gift and an honoring. And Sayyidina, Mu'ad, Sayyidina Umar said, Mention them to Abu Bakr. Sayyidina Mu'ad said, Why should I mention this to Abu Bakr? And Mu'ad left, and that night he dreamt that he stood on the edge of the fire, and Omar held, held, had him by his belt, and was holding him and preventing him from falling to the fire. Sayyidina Mu'ad was frightened and said, This concerns what Omar asked me to do. So he went to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and told him about it, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr permitted them to him and said, I heard Rasul Sam say, Perhaps Allah will reward you. Right, so basically, what was Sayyidina Omar was worried about was something Rasul actually said from before. Right, about zakat, that when the when the those who went around collecting zakat were given gifts, right? and it was the way of, and this was something that now in our time you see you find it also when it comes to teaching, when it comes to having position, you're not allowed to take uh, favors or gifts, right? Because of there is is it? I think there is there is a, there is a ruling gun, right? I think even in Singapore there's a ruling about for teachers you can't take an amount, right? So you can be something something that is um, small and you know not. Yeah, you have to declare, right? You do, do, it's declaring, lah. Say, no, my, go and declare. <laughs> right, go and declare what they're doing to you. Right, because even though it's not outright bribery, right, but it is like trying to get the heart to, to incline towards the people. Uh, so from Sayyidina Omar's time already, Sayyidina Omar's time, they already spoke about it. Right, that, that those who are, you know, placed in position do not take favors, nor do they take gifts. It's not, it's not bribery outright, but it's favors and gifts. Right, because it can cause your heart to incline towards them, you know. So, so I, and and even right now in in our society, this is something that is in the in the in the law. Uh, you you can't do it because uh, otherwise you might be biased uh, uh, towards towards the people. As inside now, Omar he in our religion from law from you know, a thousand years ago, <laughs> and he spoke about it. You know, mashallah. So, mashallah. So, now Omar had a very sharp sense of justice. <laughs> very very keen sense he, he could sense something it's not right and also he could uh, compare with what Rasulullah had done but Rasulullah when he was teaching the Sahaba this he said that you know so, when, when he showed his displeasure of what was being what was happening with the people who were collecting zakat when they went out to collect zakat and they came back and they gave the zakat as what they were collected and Rasulullah would say what about that you know that amount that is in your hands and he said oh this is a gift that they gave me right? it's for me and that's for you and the Rasulullah, he just went to the mimba, he went up the mimba and he said that, that it could be that some of you come to me and I have, you know, uh, employed you to go and collect zakat. And even the zakat collectors already have uh, a wage for them. Right? They, they go and collect zakat, you come back with the zakat and you say, this is for you and this is for me. Right? Taking what a gift and then, then, then he gave the ruling, this is not allowed. Uh, you do not, and he, and and how and how he has laid it out was that in the in the narration, Rasulullah said that will you if you if you are so sure that this gift will come to you and you don't have this position, meaning that if you are staying in your house, the gift will still come to you, then it's a gift for you, right? But because you have the position, the gift came to you, and uh, that shows something else, and that's why the gift came because you're in position. 
Ayan, so, so this way, uh, we say na say, say, some, uh, one say na muas. And because you are placed in position, right, any uh, people will begin to give right, you things. Right? So be warned, you know, be, be warned about that. And say na Omar, you know, he picked it up. Right, they say na Omar had um, young nets, meaning a slave boys, slave boys around him. They were given to him as gifts right, from people. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Ibrahim Salim. Alright, Alhamdulillah. Let's do the Sayyidina Sayyidina Muaz story. The next story that Ashdi wanted to point out, I had to call the sticker. Okay, was the religion of Abdul, uh, religion of Abdul Qais? Anyone has any questions at this point? Let the or his behavior and his yeah he was known for his uh beautiful uh, the, the 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 hadith is it mm. the last words of advice and our behavior and manners towards people be the best O Muaz bin Jabal inshallah so now for Subhanallah sallallahu alaihi wasallam alhamdulillah okay we're going into the delegation of uh, Abdul Qais I think I've not I, I I put a mark there but I'm not so sure if I've gone through it okay but I'm just going to go through it like, insh- inshallah if you have, you have done it from the, uh, one time now I can do it again because the story of Ashaj right? As- uh, Ashaj is uh, one of the one of the from one of the delegates right, whereby his story is, is mentioned several times right in the story of the of the Wufud of the delegations Right, he's one of the very prominent um character, very prominent companions, a very com- prominent sahaba, uh, sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Same with like Zid al Khail. Right, there are specific individuals that they stand out. Uh, so so that's why I'm not going through all the delegations, but I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna zoom in to specific individuals. Right, that we just see from them lessons. Inshallah. All right. So it was uh for the we're on page four one zero. Eh, Amira. Just just the next one. A few more pages down. Okay, four one zero. Tamam. Abdul Qais is a large tribe that traces the lineage to Rabi'ah. They used to live in Bahrain, uh, and from uh, some of them were Christian. Right. So basically, this tribe they had two delegations. The first one right happened. Uh, uh, the first one was that there was a man from amongst them that would go to Medina for trade. Right. And from there, he heard about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, he would ask him about his people. So when he mentioned about the nobility of his people, right, the righteousness of his people, right, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, uh, you know, he he heard about it. Uh, he presented Islam to uh, Munkiz, right, his name, and he embraced Islam, learned the Fatiha, and learned Surah uh, Iqra. Right, and then Rasulullah wrote him a document, and he went back to Bahrain, right, and he. Uh, uh, and and he told Al Munzir about it, right? And then they all embrace Islam, right? So then thereafter, right? Thereafter, they sent a group of a delegation to Medina, right? To embrace Islam. So and this was this was the this, the the this was something that in the Sunnah of Rasulullah Islam that whenever a people had a they had a positive trait, right? About them, right? And there some there some could could very could easily identify. That this positive trait and it's something that we see in our ulama today also, right? That when they recognize that in a in a culture there is this prominent trait, right? That is very much that is very close to the uh to 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 that is noble, right? Noble akhlaq, then they will bring Islam there because this trait of this will allow them to identify the truth in Islam. So when they embrace Islam, Islam will enhance the goodness. That is in them, mashaAllah. Right, so this was the way that some uh, used to do, right, in the in the past, and this was was the way that uh, the people uh, up to today they would do. Right, and, and 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 on the other hand, right, there were also people who had a very you know <laughs> very negative <laughs> trait about them. Right, the, the, the society there was something about the society that was very negative. Right, that also you know there will be a lot of um, it might you know bring about. Uh, hypocrisy might bring about you see that most animal the liar it might bring about um, because a lot of and mainly the, the main distinguishing factor was was love of the world right? so when the society had you know a very strong desire right, for the for the dunya 
Now, in spite of them coming into Islam, right? If you don't take Islam, the, the 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 teachings seriously, then they can. It's when they begin to rebel, they begin to uh, let go, they begin to uh, uh, denounce their Islam, and right? because of the or being overcome by the dunya. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. Alright. So it was narrated that while Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so they went, so they, when they embrace Islam, you know, a, a few, they embrace Islam, they set forth to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi with a group right, of seven or thirteen men in the month of Muharram in the fifth year. It was early on. There were two delegations from this tribe, right, to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so the first, the first, uh, the first uh, delegation, eh, that is on page four one one. It is narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was talking to his companions when he suddenly said. From this pass, it means from this um, valley. Right? So within mountains, it's, it's called a pass. Right? So from this pass, right, a group will come. Right? And this is our prophecy. Eh? <laughs> a group will come to you who are the best of people of the east. Right? From where they're from, Bahrain. Right? The best of people of the east. They have worn out their camels and depleted their provisions right? in coming all the way here right? to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there were those, you know, um, in the other uh, delegations that I, I might have not mentioned who were like in their hundreds, a hundred, and not hundreds, in, in, in their one hundreds. In their one hundreds. In their one hundreds. I don't know <laughs> if anyone has ever said that term. Because in the hundreds, we like <laughs> there are many hundreds, right? Like like in the thirties right now, right? So basically, someone who was hundred and fifty years old, right? So <laughs> basically, so so uh, there was there was a man who was hundred and fifty years old who travelled all the way to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, to declare his Islam and to learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to look at his you know at his blessed face, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Habib mentioned at this point that you know that it was in his uh, in his book it was written for him and right, that he will not die until he sees the blessed face of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he travelled all the way just to see that. You know, mashallah. We saw last week you know um in one of the uh one of the dedications young men. Right, where, where, where people consider him to be a young boy, right, but he went all the way right, just to get do doa from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It mattered to them, right, the, the entire traveling, <laughs> Subhanallah. And they are not, you know, not not, not like our time by we vehicles. Right, it's really it's really months on end, right, on their camel just to reach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is so much barakah in what they do right, because of their of their dedication and their sincerity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So Sayyidina, so when Rasam said this, right, Sayyidina Omar he stood up and he went forward. This is the response. <laughs> Rasam said, said there's gonna be a people from this from this end. And and he praised the people. Sayyidina Omar got up to honor them. Right? He got up, he went to, to uh, went forward right, to see who they are, and right, to honor them and to bring them in. And all of the companions, that's what they were doing. They were they were basically being in assistance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh you know, in welcoming the wufud. Right, the delegations, and so it's something that Medina has not seen from before, you know, because Medina is a small town, an oasis town. Right? So suddenly now there's like, like waves of people coming into the masjid, right? people standing in saf, and even for hajj, you see in, in the tens and thousands of people coming down. Right? It's something that that really this is why Sayyidina Abu Sufyan, right, when he saw this, he just said, "This is this is a matter that is, you know, that that, that is just is 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 in a great shatan, in a great." It's a great affair, right? the the affair of your nephew. Saying saying to Sayyidina Abbas, and Sayyidina Abbas said, "Inna hu nubuwa." Right? It is it is prophecy of Abu Sufyan. It's prophecy. It's not it's not anything else, <laughs> and it couldn't be anything else. Subhanallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right? So it uh, uh so Sayyidina Omar went to meet them. So he met a. So he, so he met a group of travelers and he said, Who are you? And they said, We are people from Bani Abdul Qais. And he said, Verily, Rasulullah just spoke very well of you. Right? Then he walked with them until he, they reached the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, uh, and uh, then he said, Here is the person you seek. Right? So these men, they were eager to meet Rasulullah ﷺ so much that they quickly got off, they threw themselves off into their saddles because they were rushing. To get to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, either uh, they threw the of their saddles at the door of the masjid and they raised to kiss the hand and the feet of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rasam welcomed them just for sincerity and right? is waiting for the moment they met the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When he welcomed them, 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and uh, and and he prayed for them saying oh allah forgive abdul qais who have embraced islam willingly not by force nor after the humility of captivity right it is they came themselves right? and then he looked at them and said who is your leader and chief and so they gestured to it was al munzir bin aiz and rasulullah said this is this ashaj right? meaning the one that has a scar his scar on his face Right, basically, and and that's why he's known by that name because some pointed to him and said the one that has a scar, right? and there was a uh, the, the scar came from the from a kick of a donkey, right? So he was he was scarred, right? but he was but he was the one whereby Rasulullah Rasulullah praised his natural character, and from his hadith right, comes uh, the proof that there are people who have natural naturally good character. Uh, there are people who are blessed in that way. Allah has given them right, this character. Right, so it, um, so it, that was the first day the name was given to him, and it's because of the scar that on the face, uh, on his face, in the hoof of a donkey, uh, from the hoof of a donkey. Then he had stayed back from his people. So basically, the 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 leader, right? What happened to him was that he, well, everyone rushed off of their animals and they ran to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, to to kiss his hand and kiss his feet. And what the leader had done was that he had, you know, he was very proper. <laughs> right, he got off his donkey, he settled the donkey because the Prophet was right there. He's not going to run away. He's going to be still there, <laughs> mashallah. And right, so he, you know, he he and he went off. He just came from travel. He uh, cleansed himself. Clean up himself. He changed his clothes. Right? He made himself presentable. Then he went to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this was the was a trait that some actually saw. The entire time he was observing the leader, and right? he had taanni. Right? Taanni is the opposite of uh, of of being hasty. Uh, so he was, you know, he was not hasty in things. He took things step by step, right? And he, you know, he basically he planned it out. You know, he prepared himself, right, to honor and right? so to make the first meeting with Rasulullah SAW right, very memorable for him. <laughs> right? Just to remember this moment of meeting Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? So he, so he said that some had watched him do this entire thing. He stayed back from his people so he could tie their camels, right? tie everybody's camels <laughs> together, take the baggage down, right, and all this. Under the gaze of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was watching him, right? So, mashallah, you know that this is what the leader was. The leader served the people. Everybody ran to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He stayed back and ensured everything was okay. And then he went to meet Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he got the gaze and the praise from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he took out his leather bag, removed his travel clothes, and dressed in his fine clothes, right? Nicer clothes, right? To meet Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he walked to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, took his hand and kissed it. Right? So he was going to do it, but he just went to do it. Properly, right? Mashallah. And Rasulullah welcomed him and was kind and friendly towards him and set him by his right side, right? He was a man who was <laughs> say, ugly man. He says he had a uh, deformity, you know, in his uh, in the scar, right? a scar in his face. Right? When he saw Rasulullah looking at him, right? Uh, you know, in his at the scar that was on his face because probably it was a very prominent scar right, on his face. Um, uh, he said, "Ya Rasulullah, indeed, a man is not evaluated by his looks." All that is needed of a man are two small organs, his heart and his tongue. Right? All that is needed to be made uh, beautiful of a man is two things. Right? Mashallah, it's all, it's the, there, so there are people who are of, of caliber. <laughs> Mashallah, they have the wisdom that they showed. You know, Mashallah, and Rasulullah appreciated. You know, and he he acknowledged. Subhanallah. So the two small organs, eh? All that is needed of you, your heart and your tongue. Right? If it's ugly, it's ugly. If it's beautiful, it's beautiful. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, You have two qualities that are loved by Allah and His Messenger. And he said, What are they? May, may my, my, father and fa- my mother and father be your ransom. This is the way of their speech, right? they, how they, they will speak. When they want to know something uh, very much. So what are they? He says, he says Helm and, and uh, at the end, yeah, uh, tolerance and composure. Right? So basically, you, 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 know, you have a, like a forbearance right? that, that is with you. You don't get... You know, um, uh, angry easily, right? You you kind of you you maintain, right? And then you have composure whereby you take things right? as they as they come, right? And he said that do I deliberately practice them? You know, do I you know uh, train myself on them, or are they part of my character? Right? Something you know in my substance that Allah has given me. Then the Rasulullah said that Allah has given it to you, right? It's from your it's from your natural character, right? So this one is an, again a proof that it can happen to a person. Uh, but they are born in that way, and and uh, uh, good nature, uh, good naturedness is good naturedness, and also that uh, he's not hasty. You know that some people have it in their character to be hasty, 
They just want everything now, 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 and then they don't think, you know, about it, and then they make decisions, and then they they they, they do things, then they regret, then they say sorry, then they come in a full cycle all over again. And they just, just don't learn how to just wait, <laughs> like wait, analyze, you know, take time, you know, and and basically, uh, hastiness is from shaitan. Right? It is from shaitan to push, to keep pushing people right into things without thinking, you know, mashallah. Right? So so it, uh. So this is something that uh, can be trained. The thing about about character, right? Character can be trained because he asked about about you know can was it something that I put myself on or so Allah put it in me? So when it comes to good character, there are two types. Imam Ghazali also speaks about it in his books, right? There are two types. There are those that are natural to you, and there are those that are trained, and right? you can force yourself on. Right? And mashallah, you know, uh, the more a person struggles against his natural character that is ugly. So if someone is naturally hot tempered, you know, or naturally hasty, or naturally uh, sensitive, or naturally, you know, this is the way that they are created. That's how Allah has placed them, and that is that's how the Sharia comes in, right? To to purify character, right? And to, to 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 remove what is ugly and to enhance what is beautiful, right? So it, um, this is the proof of that. And so Allah gave it to you, and and then He said, "Praise be to Allah, Alhamdulillah, who gave me these two qualities that Allah and His Prophet love." Right? Then He said, "Ya Rasulullah, uh, may my, my father and my, my mother be your ransom." Ya Rasulullah, you are more knowledgeable of the names of our villages than we. When He asked him, you know, uh, uh, about his land and name some villages of it, and right? He said, "You know of our villages, of our villages more than we." Right? And Rasulullah, He spoke about his his uh, about the the, the place. Then he turned to the Ansar and he said, People of Ansar, honor your brothers for they are like unto you in Islam. They came to Islam willingly and obediently, voluntarily, right? And not disgrace, not, you know, just not, not, not by conquering, right? But they, like the Ansar, right? They, they willingly embraced Islam to the people of the Qais, right? MashaAllah. And that was the story of, Ash, of, of Ashaj, right? MashaAllah. Okay, Alhamdulillah, we're going to pause there for today. MashaAllah. Huh? No questions? Al-Najran. Okay, the thing about it is that Kira Musibah. What then? So, what's the first question is, What then do we say to some sisters who tell us that everything other than the Quran and Sunnah is innovation? I find myself talking, hearing, taking hearing time, and time again, sis report they get into circles where teachers tell them to only follow Quran and Sunnah. What should I tell them to do? Basically, if you think about it, right, all of our imams follow Quran and Sunnah. All of the righteous, the the imams, follow Quran and Sunnah. Right, everything is within the boundaries of Quran and Sunnah. So if you know some thoughts, say na muaz to judge in accordance to your to what you understand or muaz and what you understand from a training that is placed in the Quran and the Sunnah. So the Quran and Sunnah has placed for us uh, boundaries. Right, there are boundaries that are laid out by the Quran and Sunnah. You do not overstep the boundaries. The boundaries are clear. Right. So it, um and and the thing about it is that. Some there 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 are groups out there right, who will uh, label things that are within the boundaries of the Quran and Sunnah. They will label these things to be outside of the boundaries of the Quran and Sunnah. Right. So when they so so in that situation, um, it 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 could be because of a uh, lack of understanding of what these things are. Right. So like for example, let me be very clear example that we just did like a maulid. Right. So a maulid. What is the maulid? Reciting of the Quran. Right, reciting of hadith. There is hadith in a lot of maulids, um, and in fact, one of the well, some of the the greatest maulids that are that are read, right, they are from muhaddithin. Right, there are people who actually know thousands of hadith, and they are and, and for sure they they are people who are also masters of the of 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 Quran memorization and Quran understanding. Right, so and they are those who actually like like mum. Um, Imam al Dibai, Imam al Dibai, like he, the Imam himself is very knowledgeable, right, in the Quran and the Hadith. Um, so to, they would know what is Quran and the Hadith, and they would know what is within the boundaries of Quran and the Hadith, right. So, it, um, so why is Maulid basically? It is Quran, right. It is there is Hadith, right. Uh, a lot of the Maulids, Shafil Anam, all of it is full of Hadith. 
um, did uh, it is a uh, sirah, right? It is story of Rasulullah Sallam. It is Salat Al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you that they used to send Salat to Rasulullah Sallam, uh, and that is in response to the injunction in the, in the Quran to say to send your Salawats. And there's so many proofs, right, on on this uh, and, and on many of the matters that that people seem to claim is not. Uh, following the Quran and Sunnah, you know, Subhanallah. If like, I mean, if this if these great scholars who are scholars of Quran and Sunnah are not following Quran and Sunnah, what are they following? I mean, they, all of them follow Quran and Sunnah, right? But we trust the the following of Quran and Sunnah of scholars who are trained, right? So, like for example, when someone says only follow Quran and Sunnah, right? Then yes, I, Inshallah, you know, we we aim to do so, right? But by the the understanding and the explanation of Imam Shafi'i, for example, or Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, or Imam uh, Abu Hanifa, or Imam Malik, right? These are people whom I would trust, right? Their interpretation and because of their taqwa and their caliber, right? As opposed to someone. Uh, uh, someone, someone. Uh, for example, someone else with some other interpretation, right? So, for example, like the actions of doing it in congregation. So, doing it in congregation. Someone else, someone just put up another question in following that. Like right? doing it in congregation, right? There are hadiths, in fact, that speak about doing uh zikr in congregation, doing reading, you know, uh, teaching hadith in congregation, reminding each pe- uh, each other in congregation. That the one who who remembers Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in Himself, Allah remembers Him in Himself. The one who remembers Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in a gathering, Allah remembers Him in a gathering greater than it, right, or more noble than it. There's so many hadith out there about congregation and the fadl and the the virtue of congregation. It's in hadith, right? So doing it in a special in a specific time, right? That also you can find a lot of proofs, right? Um, uh, that uh in in the ummah, so so a lot of proofs in in the in the, in the sunnah, right? Of Sahaba specifying. Like a particular day, right? To to go somewhere and to do a particular act. For example, the Rasulullah in his in his Sunnah, right? He would sp- uh, go on Saturdays to go to Masjid Qubba. So he puts aside a day specifically to do that particular act. Right? The thing about about doing a uh, Maulid in the in the in the month of the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Is because our Ummah has come to a state that we don't we don't remember our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enough, right? So by right it should be daily. <laughs> by right it should be Weekly, like what we do weekly, right? By right, it should be as often as you can. Remembering the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, learning his 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 sira, learning his life, learning his uh, hadith, all of these things, right? So, but because the ummah has become so weak that the scholars, you know, they 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 do and at least once a year, you know, at least once a year do it. You know, once a year, if you can't do it, you know, every Monday on the day that he was born, if you can't do it every Thursday or, or every Friday, whereby Salawat it is sent right to him, Salawat Allah Yusam, then do it once a month. If you can't do it every once a month, then do it once a year. If you can, you know, in a sense, is to encourage the Ummah from, uh, from, from. Uh, to to do something about their relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so that's why the the Malays are written in in song form, so people learn about his life. Right, in song form, so they memorize. That's how the the the, the you know the awam the the um the masses get attracted, right? To it, they come by song, right? So and the thing about it is, it, like for example, we go through, we all go through you know book, right? Book and lessons. I mean, sometimes you know for some people it's just heavy, right? Like at night and going through this story and that story and that person's name and that person's name and you're like it's it's heavy stuff, right? But for some people they just they just like the 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 the, the song in it. Right, just remind themselves of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so to actually put a put it, you know, in a specific time is not an innovation, right? But in fact, uh, to do it in that way is to encourage people, right, uh, to be to remember, right, to, to when when uh, to, to remember to celebrate the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And in fact, uh, when you say celebrate, it means to rejoice. To rejoice that he was sent to this ummah, you can rejoice about uh, or, uh, the, of his being sent to us right, by by fasting every Monday. Right, that is the so so that is the um, the the principle given to us by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And when someone came to me and said, "Ya Rasulullah, should I fast on Mondays?" and he said, "Fast, right? For it is a good day to fast. It is a day I was born in. Right? That is an indication. Right? Fast on Mondays. Right? So indication meaning that you fast because you, you are celebrating the birthday." Of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, can we celebrate that he was born? Yes. Right. How do we celebrate within the boundaries of the religion? Right. So, what, uh, what, what are the boundaries of the religion? Give out in sedekah. Which is why in Maulid there is a sunnah of um of our of our teachers right to or, or of the righteous to give food 
I drink mouth it's because it's sedekah right? to, 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 to give a feast right uh, to the people and then uh, other ways of celebration is to give out money to the poor other celebration to read Quran right to uh, to, to praise the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so all within the Quran and the Sunnah uh, uh, limitations that have been set They are all within right? To say To put it on a specific time and day right? What is the proof That that is not allowed uh, To say something That is, is not allowed There has to be proof right? What is the proof That is not permissible To put something On a specific time And on a specific day Like for example If let's say I want to do once a week Slawat a thousand times For example If I say to myself I'm going to do every Friday Doha time Is it wrong of me to do that? Right, so just to put it on my phone timer, <laughs> you know, so that I remind myself, okay, every Friday, Doha time, 1,000 slawats do it, right? If I say, but if someone says to me, you can't specify a time and a day, then I say, okay, then freestyle. Then then I'll forget, right? I'll forget. Well, 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 then the Friday come, Friday goes, and like, oh, Friday just passed by. And then you're like, is it Saturday already? <laughs> it goes Friday night, eh? <laughs> Saturday already, you know, what am I going to do? Right, um, that's, that's what it is. Basically, it's, it's just from the hikmah. Right, from the hikmah of our scholars, they put aside a day and a time, right? That is understood by the people, right? That it doesn't go past you, right? In it, and it's something that is can be derived from the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? That he puts aside a day and a time for certain things. So Friday mornings, right? He would go and visit, um, uh, go to the graves right, on Friday mornings, right? On Saturday he would go to uh, Major Quba, right? So these are the things that he has done in his tartib. You know, he has he has like a schedule. Right, and this is what scheduling is all about by the day, by the week, and in fact, scheduling of our prayers that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, scheduling by the year, right? We can go into all of the proofs that our scholars have written extensively on it that to say that you can't put a day and a time on it, right? What's the proof? What's the proof that you can't do that, right? Why is it not within the sunnah and not within the hadith in the Quran? Uh, so, that's, that's basically what it is, right? So, just just to um, you know, expand on that, I was going to speak about it, you know, like really, like what's so wrong about it being congregation? Is there, a, is there a proof that you cannot do in congregation? Because in Islam, there's two things, right? Proof to say can, right? And proof to say cannot. Right? So, you say something is haram, why not? Why is, why is it haram? What's your proof? Right? That I can't sit together and remind the people. Then what is da'wah? Right? If this is not da'wah, then what is da'wah? And right, da'wah is not by myself, it's with a group of people. Can I sit there by myself and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by myself? And in fact of the hadith, right? When you go by of the you know of the of the gardens of gardens of paradise, then sit. Right, sit in the gardens. Right, and then all the angels go around there. and these are all the hadith sahih. Right? They they they're the angels who scour the earth. Angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who scour the earth, looking for gatherings whereby it, it, you know, Allah is mentioned. This means gatherings. These gatherings actually exist. <laughs> right? And then when they come and then they will call their angel friends, right? They, they, all the other angels coming around and they will encircle. And other hadiths or some came up one day, he saw some a group of people doing zikr, a group of people learning, right, uh, you know, and understanding the religion, and he said they are both on Goodness, so many hadiths about congregation, you know, so so many. Sayyidina Omar bring the people together to pray taraweh in jama'ah when it was not done in the time of Rasulullah SAW in the way Sayyidina Omar had done it. Right? Permissible. Right? None of the, the, the companions who were knowledgeable in the religion, and there were many, there they, they were of them who were there, highly knowledgeable. Sayyidina Ali was there, and Sayyidina Ali prayed Sayyidina Omar. Right? And there was, and in fact, there was a hadith whereby. And the narration by Sayyidina Ali when Sayyidina, Sayyidina Omar did that, right? And so after Sayyidina Omar's passing, Sayyidina Ali came to the masjid and he saw in during Ramadan that there were rows of people praying tarawih. And, and, uh, Sayyidina Ali said to, uh, said, may, uh, Allah bring light to the, to the grave of Sayyidina Omar, right? For he has brought light to our masjids. And he has brought life to our masjids in Ramadan. Because Sayyidina Omar did that, right? He, he made, he began the congregation, he began the, um, uh, which is basically uh, to say that some did not do it, right? That is not true, right? To do to say he didn't he did not place timings on certain things, he didn't schedule certain things. That is not true to say that he didn't he didn't he didn't schedule certain things. He did scheduling the entire concept of scheduling the entire concept of congregation. He saw congregation and he affirmed it, right? So so this is why we this is why we say it's principles. Right, principles, and this only makes sense because when you th- you see, you know that this is a religion that was spread over time and over and over place, right? so over, over 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 societies, over heritage, over cultures, right? That it has that that in a sense, right? The religion to be 
to be able to fit into the cultures of people, it goes by principles. Uh, there, are, there are principles that are not to be bypassed or to be transgressed. But it's not like hard and fast, rigid structure that everybody must fall into this mold. Right? But it's principles. So like aurat is a principle. Right? What is what we covered? What is what is what can be shown? Right? So when you enter into a culture, it's a mold. Right? That you know that, that the culture can work with. So it's principles, and it only makes sense because to go across zaman and and makan, you know, about uh, across time and place, it only makes sense. That is is going by principles that are not to be transgressed, and these principles were understood by the Sahaba, and they spread these principles, and and Rasul taught them that also that when you see when he saw something the Sahaba did, it's within the principles that he has set, and right, from the Quran and from the Sunnah, and right, so it's not rigid like that. That you know that um. And in fact, if you want to be rigid, right, then then you know every Saturday, every Friday morning, I right, go to the graves. I right, so only on Friday morning I can go to the grave, right? I mean, Subhanallah, you know, or like like and Subhanallah that only on Saturday on Saturdays I can go to Masjid Qubba, you know, because I, because he he only did it on Saturday, like in a sense, he didn't do it on any other day. So what what if I'm in Medina on Monday, like, and I want to go to Masjid Qubba, I can go, right? If I'm going to be there on one or two days, I can just go to the Masjid. It's no problem, right? Uh, but it's, it's specifically. So to say he didn't do it, what do you mean by didn't do it? You know, like, like didn't do the specific, specific thing. There are many specific things, right? But the, is a principle there? Yes, the principle is there. Right? It's within the principle. Right? So this is something that has been discussed uh, thoroughly by our scholars. Um, uh, the scholars of al Sunnah wa Jama'ah. And in fact, it has been in the Ummah for generations from the time of the companions to the Tabi'een, to those who came after, to those who came after, all the way down to our time. It's only in recent history that people begin to speak against it. Right? So if all of, of our the righteous and the scholars of the past did not find any issue with it being, and none of them said being uh, you know, out of Islam, right? but they did say that the practices has to be within the limitations. So there were those who were saying that certain practices were not within limitations like the mixing of gender and these are things that they, they, they will point out right so it, uh, they, they will mention certain things that is not within the limitations right but sadaka you know uh, to put it on a specific day right whereby people know to put aside that day in that year as a holiday so they can celebrate it you know mashallah so people can, can in sense preempt and even then in our own society in the secular society our full year is planned out also right you, know, you, have, you have public holidays long weekends so you can preempt and you can say, okay, it's long weekend. Okay, I'm going to put this uh, there, and, and it helps us. You know, help you schedule your year through, and there is a hikmah in that, right? In, in scheduling, right? So it, uh, scheduling itself is not. I mean, uh, otherwise you can go into a long in a long column of of how you can't schedule. If you can't schedule, then then if you can't schedule what somebody not schedule, then how? <laughs> how are you going to do it? Right, so, so in a sense, you know, mashallah, when it comes to a lot of the sunnahs of Rasulullah right, Islam, we actually put it into scheduling. Um, it makes it easier right, for a person to to have istiqama on it, right, to to keep to it. And in fact, we should celebrate Rasulullah Islam more regularly than once a year, right? So celebrate him, meaning that gives it out in sedekah, spread his sunnah, um, uh, teach uh, teach his sirah, uh, uh, teach about his life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, just one, just a few more questions about this. Uh, people give my husband and I gifts. Uh, should we give them away uh, to protect ourselves? Okay, it depends. You know, if you have position that you think that they are giving that you gifts for, because they are specifically um, position, right? So for asatiza, right? They will give you gifts, right? Um, can't stop them. Try and stop them so many times. They won't. They won't stop giving you gifts, right? So it um, it's up to you, right? If you want to go on whatsoever is your niat, right? To keep the gift somewhere and then give it out. <laughs> Every now and then, right? Or whatever you want to do, lah. You can sell it. You can because you don't want hot also, right? Because you hot things, right? So mashallah. Um, but sometimes people give gifts out of love for you, <laughs> so they give they, they give you the gifts or gratitude, or gratitude, right? So it's up to you. It's up to you. But as long as it's not like causing you to be biased, if like you're a zakat collector in some way, or you know, uh, being biased towards them, um, leaders boundaries with gifts the leader rejected if it's too much. Right. Uh, uh, so basically, if someone has position, right? If a, as far as possible, not to not to allow for, you know, expensive gifts, uh, to be given by individuals. Like in the sense, if it's given by an entire group of people, 
you know, and they and they give you a gift. Uh, so there's not there's no biasness that is possible to happen, and there is no like favors that is you know uh, intended uh, in that way, lah. Right. Right. So leaders it can be any leaders you know, of a school, of a company, of a you know anything um, of of that sort. Right. So Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, that the best of the men are the, of the easy men. He meant uh, he he in the hadith of some saying that uh, that that the the bani of the Qais, right? Uh, that they are the best men of the east. He meant uh, that uh, those particular men, right, from Bahrain, right. So the east of the peninsula, and uh, that's what that was meant. Eh? The east of the peninsula. Uh, okay, all right. Okay, so we will stop there for today. Alhamdulillah. Uh, doa after Maulid.